high school in uh, Lake Forest, uh, Illinois. We were uh, just looking at somewhere to go to school where he could play some, you know, average hockey. And um, I wanted to go to school. So we did that. Um, he won the esque you could probably say. Um, so they won that. And then the year after, it actually started with a reporter saying, all right, so how much money would it cost for ASU to become a full-fledged NCAA Division One team? And Coach Powers, uh, my boss, I've been with him ever since I got down here. Um, he's like, he threw a number out there. He's like, ah, I don't know, 30 million. And fast forward about four months later, we're a Division One hockey team. We literally started, we announced in, I think, December, and then we were a full-fledged Division One team um in january and then our schedule started the uh the following uh late september um so that was an interesting ride the first year wasn't so good but um you know in the past six years we really kind of built this thing from the ground up and it all starts with our coach um greg powers um he's been with asu ever since i mean in the late 90s um and i mean kind of look at where we are today we've we've got uh we had our goalie he played a game in the NHL two years ago. He's currently on their taxi squad right now. Um, our, our captain from last season, he's with San Jose right now. And then our captain from last year, he's with Pittsburgh right now. He's in uh, Wilkes-Barre in the farm team. Um, so it's been a pretty wild ride how fast we've kind of built this thing. But, um, you know, it's it's been a lot of fun to be a part of. Um, and then, you know, as, as far as a day in the life goes now, uh, we, we finally established ourselves to where we actually have a, a culture and kind of a routine. Um, so a typical day in the life for us kind of goes like this. Um, in a non-COVID year, I should say, because a COVID year, this, this year has been crazy with all the testing and, and all that stuff, kind of living out of a hotel for the most part. Um, so in a normal year, what we do is our guys wake up at about 7.30. They're in the gym at about 8.00. Um, so they work out in a gigantic gym. It's pretty much the size of, um, what's the name of their capital? And I, I used to back at home. It's literally that big. It is gigantic. I mean, you're talking 50 or 60 squat racks in there and state of the art equipment. Um, and then, so as soon as they, they're done to lift at nine, they'll go, uh, go to the rink. We'll, we'll have breakfast there for them. Our chef whips them up a meal for that. And then we're on the ice from 10 till 12. And then with ASU being such a, such a big school, all of our guys are able to kind of fit in class from um, anywhere from one o'clock till about seven o'clock at night. And then it's pretty much the routine Monday through Friday. And then we usually play on Fridays and Saturdays. Well, it's a pretty cool day in the life. I mean, you have a personal chef. Wow. That's pretty cool. Melon. I mean, you must be eating pretty well. Yeah, we do. Uh, we're, we're fortunate in that sense. The school allows us to, uh, really hammer home the nutrition nutritional side with our players um you know we've been afforded a fairly large budget for college hockey program um so our guys get breakfast and lunch every day at the rink and then um, the athletic department provides them a dinner uh, monday through friday as well so they're well taken care of in that regard now andrew speaking of facility you know, uh speaking of facilities andrew you guys uh, when i was down in 2016 you guys are playing off campus. Um, do you guys have a new rink that built yet or is it in the works? Yeah. Uh, so when you were down, you, you would have seen the Coyotes rink. And then I think you might have seen our practice rink there too. Um, so this is actually, after this year, we have one more year left in our old rink. Um, we've actually, we finally broken ground um, on a $120 million um, state-of-the-art facility right on campus connected to the basketball stadium and football stadium. Um, it's in the works right now. Um, it's going to be about a 5,000 seat arena. Um, there's going to be two ice sheets. So if there's ever another event in town or anything like that on our main sheet in the main, in the main bowl, um, we have, we'll always have ice available in the practice sheet. And then on our side, we're going to have our, uh, our own weight room that only, only we can use our players lounge, our, um, you know, our cafeteria, if you want to call it that we call it like the nutrition station. And then um, obviously we have our locker room and, Pretty much everything that the guys need if they need to do tutoring studying you name it um it's a pretty exciting time it took 
about four years for it to officially get off the ground, but uh, the rink is just a year away here now. So, so uh, I know everyone basically in college hockey is kind of looking at that and, you know, they're just, they're nervous now because they think ASU is going to kind of take over the college hockey uh, landscape as soon as it- no, yeah, that, uh, that's pretty amazing, Mel. And, and speaking of the league, let's kind of let's talk a little bit about the NCAA and the way the divisions are set up. Uh, maybe talk about some travel that you guys like, what your travel schedule looks like, and also um, talk a little bit about the conferences. Um, you guys, for a little while, were an independent conference. Um, when you first started, you were an independent, kind of like Notre Dame is in football, where you just played some D three games, played some D one. Just to kind of go through the transition of where you guys are at right now, what conference you're playing in. Yeah. So um, as of right now, we're so this year alone, we're playing in the Big Ten. Um, the Big Ten, it has Michigan, Michigan State, Minnesota, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Penn State, and Wisconsin, um, arguably the biggest schools outside of North Dakota in college hockey. Um, I can't say one way or another if that's going to be a long-term solution, but uh, I think you guys can, you can read between the lines that I think it's going to be. It seems like the most natural fit for us. Um, but for now, basically the way college hockey works is there's a number of different conferences. So you got Atlantic hockey, you got big 10, you got ECAC, which is kind of your more prestigious schools like, uh, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, those type of schools. You got hockey East, which is your traditional, uh, Massachusetts type of schools. So, uh, you got Boston college, Boston university, which, uh, Ryan Green from from Newfoundland's committed to his dad um, is on this call right now and his brother is on this call brother so your you pressure is already on for recruiting just kidding well Ryan already turned us down unfortunately so uh <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that um but uh we're still open to him if he's if he's into it but uh, I didn't say that uh, I'm at Maine and Hockey East uh, they got Adam Daw from Gander so uh grew up playing with that guy it's pretty cool to see how successful he's been um then you got the NCHC they have um Colorado College, Denver, North Dakota, St. Cloud, a couple of really good teams there. And then lastly, the WCHA, which is kind of turning into um, a new conference next year, but uh, they're kind of like the lower of the pack as far as NCAA Division One goes. But at the end of the day, they still produce some really good, uh, they still produce some really good teams. And they're always, there's always at least one or two teams from there that uh, contends every year. But for us, we're, we weren't really in a place to join a conference in the beginning because we didn't have the facilities yet. Um, a big thing that's been kind of slowing us down was our rink. Um, but now that that's uh, kind of behind us, um, we're looking towards the NCAC or the Big Ten. It'll be interesting to see which one we join, but um, either of those are going to be a really good fit. But for us next year, our schedule is basically a combination of um, teams from almost every conference except for the Atlantic. Um, so next year we're going to go to, uh, Boston university. Next year, we're going to go to Denver. We're going to go to, um, Minnesota state. We're going to go to St. Cloud state. Um, a lot of really good teams. And then we're going to host, um, about 20 home games next year in our, our last year in our old facility, just to kind of send it, you know, give it a little farewell tour. And especially with this year being such a, a year where we're on the road. Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but we're playing 28 games exclusively on the road this year. So we haven't had any home games besides two exhibition games last weekend against um, Team USA, uh, under-18 team. Uh, so literally every single game this year has been on the road for us. We spent 60 to 70 days on the road in hotels, um, <laughs> which is kind of crazy when you think about it, the amount of money that we spent on that. But um, that's kind of how this year's looked. But in a normal year, uh, travel for us, if we're playing on a Friday and Saturday, um, what we like to do, especially because we're so far out west, we'll uh, we'll leave on a Wednesday morning. We'll fly to you know Boston, Colorado, wherever it is. We'll get in. We'll have we'll drop our gear off at the rink. We'll have a big team dinner at the hotel. Then we'll wake up on Thursday, do all of our meals at the hotel again. We'll do um, a light workout in the morning and then a practice in the afternoon and then a nice pregame meal on Thursday night and then Friday and Saturday it's it's game days so. Um, you get your 30 minute morning skate and then you play at six or seven o'clock at night and then come home on Sunday and have a couple of days off and um, back to practice and back to work. So it's during the season, it, it doesn't really stop in college hockey. It's, you know, 36 to 40 games and, but you're on the ice at least six days a week, which is, 
I mean, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of work for the guys, but it's, it's a lot of, uh, a lot of development as well. So it's, it's really, it's a really fun mix. All right, Mellon. Um, we talked a lot about Arizona state so far. We've gotten a good idea of what the college landscape looks like. Let's kind of talk about if I'm a 2006 born player or 2007, maybe a 2005, um, how do I get to Arizona state? Like what, what's the process? When should I start that process and talk a little bit about, um, the ACs, uh, the SATs or some of the ACTs that you can write now, or when should you start thinking about, or when should you start writing those? Um, yeah. So let's dive into the educational part first. Um, the ACTs and the SAT, it's really, you want to start that process of really honing in your academics in ninth or 10th grade. I, I mean, before that, if you can, but I know, like I speaking from personal experience, I know I didn't really care about school until it was a little bit too late. So looking back on it, in a perfect world, um, you really start focusing in on your grades and trying to get, you know, A's and B's as much as you can um, in ninth and 10th grade, because at about grade 11, your grade 11 year, you want to start taking, you want to take your first SAT or ACT to kind of see where you line up. Um, and then after your 12th grade year, then you're going to take, you're going to take it again. Um, I think anywhere, anything above a 20 is usually pretty good. Um, that usually gets you through clearinghouse which is a big obstacle for a lot of Canadian kids um, just make, cause obviously we're in the United States. So it's a little bit different on how some of the academics translate to the, to the States from Canada. Um, but if you can clear that benchmark of, uh, I think it's a 20 on the SAT, then uh, you're usually in a pretty good spot, but basically as a general rule of thumb, if you have a three point 90 or 80, 80 to 90% grade at like uh, overall average in school, then, you're definitely setting yourself up to, to get into school, which um, pretty much the first question that we ask is when we're recruiting is, you know, how are your grades in school? And so that's, that's a really important aspect of becoming a college hockey player. Um, and then to kind of touch on what, when we kind of start that process where I would say we're a little bit different than a lot of the other schools. Um, a lot of the other schools, they, they tend to commit kids when they're a little bit younger. Um, what you see happen there is if you commit too young, then, you know, you don't, maybe you change your mind. You don't want to go to that school and then you end up in a bad situation. So we, we try to stay away from that. So what it, typically what it looks like for us is we don't really look at kids until they're, I would say 16 in the private schools. Um, private schools are AAA midget down here in the States or in Canada. Um, and then we'll kind of have them on our radar, have them on our, on our list. And then as they progress up, we typically look at the Alberta League and the, uh, the BCHL in Canada. And then in the States, we primarily go to um, the USHL. So that's typically where we go. Um, again, we're a little bit different than most teams because we try to build our team to be a little bit of a older team. So we're always competitive. And we want to be a team that has guys that are here for four years because we pride ourselves on having that culture of you know, really offering the full life experience to kind of develop kids. Um, but that's just how we kind of operate internally. But, um, but yeah, that's kind of what we do. Okay, cool. That, that's uh, really some really good feedback there, Andrew. I think uh, people are definitely going to benefit from listening to you talk about that, especially starting the process at a younger age where you're thinking about your grades in grade nine, thinking about your grades in grade 10. Um, also getting an SAT book or online or logging into some of the new websites that have, have sample questions. Uh, the questions are much different than what, what you would probably see on your standard, te any tests that you would do in school. They're very unique style of questions. So getting used to the format and how they're written and so on, I think is really important. So do a lot of practice exams and, and so on. So, Absolutely. You can do enough of those practice exams. <laughs> Yeah, so let's kind of talk about a little bit what you guys are looking for in a player on the ice. And you did mention, uh, first thing you mentioned was, okay, I want to make sure that I'm, uh, you know, getting my grades are a certain way. Okay, once we get past that, okay, I've got good grades. Then what are you looking for in a player? Are you looking for speed? Are you looking for skill, smart? Like, what, what, how do you guys look at you? Like, what's your paradigm? Or what's your, you know, your template for a player that you like? So, I mean, we kind of have, a, like, kind of a ghost roster on how we build our – build our team. Um, obviously the first line guys are going to be your higher, higher skill guys, higher IQ guys, guys that can really think the game and um, do everything at a really high level. But the holistic approach is 
we want guys that have a combination of it all. We want guys that can skate. We pride ourselves on being a team that can skate. We pride ourselves on being a team that um, doesn't take dumb penalties, that makes smart decisions on and off the ice. So that's, you know, hockey IQ. Um, and then, of, of course, skill. I mean, the big thing that we try to stay away from is, is honestly, the only thing that we try to stay away from is people with uh, egos. Um, basically, our rule at the rink is you leave your ego at the door. We're, we're a team – there's no one in the room that's more important than the next guy. So what we're really looking for is the total picture of, all right, so that kid made a mistake on that play. That's good. That's fine. We want to see them try to make mistakes, but we want to see how he reacts when he goes back to the bench. Is he talking back to his coach? Is he talking back to his teammates? If he is, then you know what? He's off our list. That's done. That's, that's a no, that's a no go for us. We want to see guys that can bring up the kids around them and just be kind of be that total package, which, it's a little bit cliche to say, but when you're, you know, you're in the market and you only have 18 scholarships to give, you got to be very selective on that front. So really, I mean, what we have is we have a lot of guys that are, you know, both physically fit. Um, we really like that. We got, we like smart players and we like guys that are, are willing and ready to work on the ice every single shift. I mean, that's, that's how we've become successful right now. We, we don't, we're not a team with a ton of skill or team with a ton of heart and a ton of work ethic. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking for as a program right now. That's very like to kind of touch on that. Uh, I work for the Quebec league and we do talk a lot about, okay, what we look for in players and how we rank players and what the importance, but they do give us kind of a pie chart, but I kind of prioritize hockey IQ. I prioritize compete level, I prioritize attitude and speed. Like those are very important. I would actually probably have skill as fifth of those things. In my opinion, that's just how I do it. Um, skill is not, as now it's still very important, don't get me wrong, all those five things are very important for the full package, but um, if a guy has a lot of skill but doesn't have a whole lot of character and doesn't want to win battles, doesn't compete, and doesn't skate all that well, um, sometimes it's, it's a little bit tougher. Um, let's touch a little bit on campus life. Uh, you and I had a, had a few uh, swallies down in uh, Scottsdale back in 2016 when I went down to visit you in Matt Kennedy. Well, let's talk yeah. a little bit about um, uh, the Phoenix area, how nice it is, and kind of, you know, do a little bit of a promotion of Arizona for us. Well, um, to start off, it is February 10th right now. I don't know for sure, but it's probably snowing at home. If I had to guess, it's probably, you know, minus, you know, five, whatever it is. Stop it's 22 it. degrees here today. Um, I went golfing on Sunday. I wore shorts and a T-shirt. Um, basically, all of our guys – in the last two weeks, we've had two weekends off. Um, so our guys are able to go golfing, um, hang out by the pool to, if they could. Um, like, campus life at Arizona is it's interesting. Um, during the season, we we really kind of keep our guys on lockdown, really make sure that they're living the right way on and off the ice. But where it really comes beneficial is when the season's over, you know, um, between March and August. Um, they have access to our, our strength coaches and outside of that, they're not doing a whole lot. So they get the opportunity to enjoy, you know, whether it be spring training, whether it be NHL games, you name it. Um, add on to that, they got 70 or 80 degree weather. Um, they got about 50 different golf courses down here. Uh, and they can pretty much walk anywhere and be anywhere within 10 to 15 minutes, wherever they want to go. So um, that's kind of what we offer for our guys is, yeah, we, you know, we don't have the best rink yet, but we have the best lifestyle by far out of any, any other program and the rink is on its way. So Arizona kind of <laughs> offers the full package in that sense, to say the least. I can definitely second that. I mean, I'm a big, I'm an avid hiker. I like being outside. So um, Phoenix has, I mean, Camelback Mountain is right in the city. So that's like a, a morning afternoon hike. It's great if you're into hiking, you drive an hour north and you're in Sedona, which is spectacular. I mean, a lot of hiking. Yeah. You can, and the Grand Canyon is a couple hours away. I can get into a full story on that, how I, my car broke down on the way up there. And, but we won't get into that in this uh, particular interview. Um, guys, we'll, we'll open up the floor right now to anybody. Um, I'll just turn on the, I'll turn on some, uh, some on mutes here. If anybody wants to ask a question to Andrew or Jeremy wants to ask a question to Ryan or anybody like that, this could be a little fire, just a rapid fire session. Um, just introduce yourself. Um, would like to have um, a pair of Bauer socks and a toque. If anybody has a great question for Andrew, Cavi, and I, I uh, will decide on who gets it. So uh, I'll unmute some guys here, and uh, I'll get everybody off here for just a quick second. I'll unmute you. 
and we can uh, we can ask some. We can fire away with some questions. Absolutely. Hey, Andrew, uh, Cavi here. I played with uh, AP for almost a decade plus now, and when uh, he came to me about vision and stuff, so we tagged up and happy to hear that he came on and talked to us about the program. It looks great. Uh, two questions. Did you check out the Waste Management Open this week, this past week, and who created the sword for your player to game or, like, hardest work? Yeah, so I didn't, go to, I didn't go to Waste Management this year because of COVID. Um, basically, we're on lockdown because of the testing protocols. Um, we're about to go on our next 25-day trip, so I got to make sure I'm staying away from any exposure to that type of stuff. Um, but I've been a couple of times and it's unbelievable. I mean, a hundred thousand people watching golf is just insane. Um, but the, the pitchfork that we have, um, so basically our mascot is Sparky and it, it's, it comes back, back from football. We call it the Trident. Um, so we, we saw Sparky running around with it at a football game. And instead of having a hard hat, um, we decided, our coach decided to get us a, gigantic trident the thing actually weighs like 45 pounds <laughs> we travel around with it everywhere we go we fly at least 10 to 12 times a year and this thing weighs 50 pounds and it's literally in a gun case like you know the size of a, st a hockey stick bag and we're always checking it in with the airport and it's like they're like is this a gun we're like no it's a trident and they always open it up they put it together and they're like oh this is pretty cool but yeah i mean we that's kind of our hard hat type of word um we give it out after every win and then we uh kind of sing our fight song which is something that's a lot of fun to be a part of, especially when you're winning. Oh yeah, no, uh, we always had like traditions with hard hats when me and AP played. So when I went to the website and saw that, I just, you know, that, that just uh, speaks culture to me. And uh, I look for that, like when I'm looking at programs, like, uh, like what makes them different? So I can see a lot of uh, culture and fun and you're building a great thing down there. So keep up the hard work. Thanks man, nice seeing you again. Yeah, you too. Yeah, Andrew, a question I got is just like talking about, uh, you know, different routes to the NCAA and everybody thinks you got to go straight to the USHL and go that way. But Johnny Walker is kind of a player that went through a little bit of a different route and, and he's become a pretty good player. So maybe just talk about him and, and what you've seen in terms of his development, uh, you know, over the years. Yeah, you know what? And that actually kind of ties into how we recruit. Like we, we don't care where you are when you're 16 or 17 or 18. Like if you're a late bloomer and you end up in the ushl the bchl when you're 20 or 21 years old and you light it up then we're gonna look at you and that's pretty much exactly what we did with johnny walker johnny was a kid that i think he weighed 240 pounds when he was 17 years old he was playing in the north american league as a defenseman he had some pretty bad off-ice issues um but then one summer we knew how skilled he was and one summer we kind of uh, we talked to him and we're like, Hey, like we need you to go back to camp at 200 pounds and make this, make it the Chicago steel. And to his credit, he did that. Um, he went there. He was about, I think he was 198 pounds. So he dropped a lot of weight and he looked a hell of a lot better. And then he, uh, he ended up scoring, I think 30 goals that year. And they won the, they won the uh, Clark cup in the USHL. So it's, this was a little bit of a unique path. It wasn't easy for him, but that's something that, I mean, to say the least, we take that into consideration big time because just watching how he started out as a pretty immature kid and, you know, in the, in the North American league and wasn't living his life the right way on the ice um, or off the ice where he really turned it around and changed. And to his credit, it's pretty much what got him to the, where he is today. It's, it wasn't a race for him. It was, it was a long process, but that's something that we value as a, as a staff. And um, we're glad that we have him on our team to say the least. Cause he's, I think he's the leading scorer in the country with uh, goals uh, over the past four years. So definitely a special player. Alrighty. Anybody else have anything there guys feel free to unmute, uh, unmute and fire away. Um, again, I'd love to hear, hear from some guys especially some of the 06s in on this group and in, in on this group chat. And just to reiterate what Andrew just said too, um, it's not where you start, it's where you're finishing. Always thinking about what you can do as a player to get a little bit better, working on your game at home, uh, working on, even though we're in a bit of a lockdown phase right now where some of the hockey is shut down here, Andrew, we had 85 cases today. It's a little bit different than the YOLO uh, experience that you're living down there in Arizona, but um, you know, it's a little bit quieter right now. We had to shut down for a little while. We'll see. We'll reevaluate in a couple of weeks. But, 
you know, it's just always working on your game and being obsessed with being the best and being obsessed with wanting to get a little bit better all the time. Uh, you might not be the, the biggest player, might not be the best player right now, but just always focusing on, okay, the end game. I'm just going to keep moving up in that right direction. And then there, you know, people are going to look at me. And that's why I really like the college route is it definitely gives guys a chance to, to fill out and, and, you know, build their bodies and get stronger. And, you know, there's guys in here that they might be 14, 15, but they're five, five and one forty. I mean, that's a, at the Quebec league level, that's, I mean, you're going into a league of men where it's under 21, you know, at the college level, you can, you know, you can play your prep school or you can play your midget and, and then develop and slowly develop, play junior eight. It's not just a, wow, this is a humongous step. It's, you know, we're gradually making the steps towards, uh, towards a really high level. That's exactly right. I mean, the way college works is, I mean, the way I look at it is you kind of buy yourself the extra four years. Um, like you just said, you know, you got your smaller guys that are 15 or 16 years old. Do they want to play in the queue? Yeah, absolutely. It's a great place to go if you're physically ready to do it. But with college, I mean, you can buy yourself that time. You can go to private school until you're 18 and private school is a great route because you can grow physically and mentally develop. And then you go to juniors for two years until you're 21 years old. And then you got another four years to play college hockey. And then you can, you know, either you have your degree and you get a job or you you really develop in college, which is what college is made for. And, you know, you, you're going to play pro and you're actually ready to jump in and play the pro game. And I mean, it's just, to me, I just think there's a lot of possibilities with college hockey. I, I don't really have a preference one way or the other. I think it's just situational. Um, but I think the college game is definitely good for, for those guys that are guys and girls really, I mean, that are willing to just trust the process and, you know, kind of are willing to put in the work to just develop and not, not worry about getting there the fastest, but just trust in the process. Are right, any questions guys? Hey, uh, I'm Connor. I was just wondering the dorms, like how many people are in a room and stuff? <laughs> so at ASU, it's a little bit different than everywhere else. Um, so we don't put our guys in dorms. We put our guys um, freshman year only. They live in on-campus housing. Um, they live in kind of resort style apartments. So it ranges from one bedroom to four bedroom. Um, basically everyone has their own bedroom, their own bathroom, and then there's a big kitchen. And then there's, you know, down the common area, there's a pool and there, there's a gym and all that stuff there. Um, so ASU is kind of unique in that sense that you don't offer the traditional dorm settings. Um, there are, we're able to put our guys in, I mean, pretty, pretty nice apartments. Um, so it's a good setup right from day one for, for our guys. Yeah, that sounds, right, thank terrible. You. sounds terrible with a pool and your own bedroom. And that sounds awful. I would never want to play there. Yeah. <laughs> <no>. <laughs> No, that's a good question, Connor. Um, that's a that's a guy there that's uh, down playing at Mount St. Charles right now, Andrew. So definitely take a look at him. We'll be talking. Nice. That's definitely not like the dorms at Mount St. Charles. I'll, I'll probably say that. Any other questions, guys? Fire away. Oh uh, yeah, uh, Nick here. How much do the uh, the average scholarship? Uh, how much does that cover? Uh, I mean, it depends. Um, basically. There's a lot of different factors that kind of come into that. Um, it ranges anywhere from full scholarship to no scholarship. Basically the way college works is you have 18 full scholarships to give out. But in saying that there's 25 guys in the roster and the more, the better your grades are, the more academic money you get. So the way we kind of look at it is everyone ends up getting money from the athletic, from athletic aid, which is a hockey scholarship. But if they're really good students, say they're, you know, they got straight A's, and they get a really good ACT or SAT score, they'll get pretty much half of their tuition covered by the academics. So what that allows us to do is a that kid that did that has everything covered, and then they get cash because of how big their scholarship is. They get some spending money, like a thousand dollars a month of spending money, and B it allows them to give some more athletic aid to some of those kids that aren't so smart. So the majority of people have pretty much everything covered. Um, it just, it kind of ranges. It depends on your, if you're in state, out of state, if you're Canadian or not, but everyone gets some type of athletic or academic aid and uh, it's, it's pretty good for everybody. That's actually a really good question, Nick. Um, that's always something that 
a lot of people ask me, people will ask me and I'll say, guys, it really depends on your, your parents' income and where you're from and your, you know, like there's a lot of factors like Andrew just said. And a lot of schools, you know, full scholarships, some guys are saying, oh, I got a full scholarship, but a full scholarship doesn't always mean a full scholarship. It often means you got a full athletic scholarship and, you know, you get a little bit of funding here and there and it ends up being about 80%. There's a lot of different ways to, to look at it, but uh, um, sometimes it's also negotiable too, or you've got three or four schools that you're talking to and you're like, well, they're going to give me this. What are you guys going to give me? And there's a little bit of a fun kind of, you know, back and forth. And that sometimes will be me to them. Yep. I mean, the biggest thing that, that I want to get like, get through to all you guys is that um, again, it's the academics. The better your academics are, the more money you're going to get. Um, that's basically always the way it goes. So if you take care of yourself in the classroom as well as on the ice and off the ice, then you're going to set yourself up to pretty much get everything taken care of for the most part. Any other questions? Guys, that's great, Nick. Great, great stuff. Um, and also, too, what you can control, what you can't control, uh, those, those types of things is kind of outside of a player's control. Your focus is getting better, and, and those kinds of things, you leave that up to your advisor, your agent, or somebody like me. Any other questions, guys? Feel free to ask. Here's your chance. Cabby, you got anything or what? You're always chatty. No, oh, I don't have had that much. Uh, I'm just enjoying uh, listening to you guys, Sir James. Jeez, that's really strange. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, let's. I'd like to thank Andrew for taking the time out of his busy schedule to do this for us. I mean, I know he told me. I said, like, well, let's do this on a Wednesday. And he came back to me and said, yeah, we're going on the road this week, but I can definitely squeeze it in on Wednesday. So uh, thank you very much to Andrew for doing this for us. Um, definitely, uh, this is on record too, Andrew. So uh, we're probably going to uh, put this on our YouTube channel if that's okay with you. Yeah, absolutely. No problem at all. I mean, hey, if any of your kids ever have questions, I mean, feel free to pass along my email or anything like that. I'm, I'm always willing to help out or answer any questions if I can. So don't be shy about that. Okay, that's great. And we'll, I'll definitely send that contact information to the people that were in on this call, which we had 26 participants. So guys, that's awesome. I know we're the timing of right now in COVID and everybody's not as busy as they normally would be, but to take the time out of your schedule to be with us today, I definitely appreciate it. Ryan, you got anything to sum up there? Yeah, no, Andrew, I just want to thank you for, for coming on and joining us. Uh, it's always interesting to give the kids here a different perspective and you know, Arizona State is uh, becoming somewhat of a wagon here recently, so it's uh, it's fun to hear about it as well. Yeah, no problem. Not so much this year, all on the road, but uh, watch out for us next year is what I'll say. My invitation must have got lost in the mail to come back down to Scottsdale, but uh, we'll talk about that at a later date. Uh, cool. He'll be good still. Yeah. He'll be invited. Yeah, there you go. You'll get a you'll get a suite then when you come down for that. Oh, perfect. Ooh. All right. Like I I stayed at the Red Rocks condos the last time. They were pretty nice. So, all righty, we're going to wrap this up, guys. Have a great evening, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see you on the ice again soon. Thanks, Andrew. No problem, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank you.